So my name's Jeff Besson, and uh, I'm a current graduate student I'm, uh, out of Harvard. My personal research involves uh, engineering and evolving proteins that manipulate DNA. Uh, I first learned about the GP Wright project when I read in a major newspaper as a headline, and it said, scientists hold a secret meeting to consider creating a synthetic human genome. And as a young scientist, uh, you know, in no way affiliated, but seeing this image of a mad scientist in a major newspaper was horrifying. And I remember thinking to myself, there is no way that that's true. Um, so I set about writing an article to correct the record, and as part of that, uh, I came across some of the public reactions. Um, so I've, I've collected a few here. Uh, the internet was was pretty colorful with this. On the on the left, Gizmodo uh, used a Blade Runner to illustrate their article. The Washington Post used a robot Frankenstein. Uh, I think the blogger that I quoted on the bottom, I think he was a bit off uh, off mark because if scientists were like Bond villains. Uh, they'd put lasers on the heads of sharks, not zebrafish. Uh, but <laughs> the reason that I bring this up is to uh, drive home the point that uh, a clear communication strategy is critical for the perception and truly for the, for the success of the GP, of the GP Right project. Uh, so the working group met today, and truthfully, we have more questions than we have answers for you. But uh, I want to present first some general principles uh, that the GP Wright leadership should take into consideration. And then um, I'll offer you some of the, the questions that our, our working group is going to tackle in the future. Uh, so first, I believe it's critical to start a dialogue with a public that isn't hierarchical or top down. Uh, if the public are to be stakeholders, they have to appreciate something about the value of this project. And that means that some of the goals need to be targeted to them and to be exciting to them. It's not good enough to say, trust me, I'm a scientist, and you may not understand this, but this is something you should be really excited about. Uh, too often, scientists don't aim their messages explicitly at the public, even though we do this all the time amongst ourselves. The scientific aspects that we write up in grants are not the same ones that we highlight when we give presentations or when we write papers. Likewise, the GP Wright projects that are going to win grants or really excite our colleagues are not the same ones that are going to blow up Twitter. Uh, and a successful communication strategy and perhaps even the project evaluation process should really take that into consideration. A uh, second aspect. Uh, that's going to be important is to learn from the public and media reception from last year's meeting. Uh, while that coverage was maybe the worst case scenario for the unveiling of this project, it can be really instructive. Uh, I understand the backlash like this. People respond to imagery and narrative stories. And so if you can't picture, for example, a prototrophic cell or even any human cell, or what tissue culture is, or, or why that even exists and what that would be used for, it's easy for your imagination to run wild. And so these bloggers are providing us an important service, right? Fair or not, they're warning us that GP Wright, in its, you know, it, maybe its past iteration, sounds like a dystopian sci-fi movie. Um, Again, this is not to downplay the intelligence of the public, because given time, of course, they could understand uh, why it would be useful to make a prototrophic cell, just to you know, use it as an example. Uh, but attention spans are really short. And we're going to have a, a precious small slice of someone's time before they form an opinion. And so the science that we choose to showcase should be approachable, it should be non-threatening, and the utility needs to be obvious. So for some examples, and there are already many examples presented this week, but uh, you know, transplantable organs grown in pigs, uh, microbes that produce biofuels or eat toxins, uh, DNA-based storage technology, et cetera. Showcasing the sort of projects that the public understands and values and perhaps trusts is also going to help assure them that the science is safe and ethical. This is maybe the primary concern that was raised last May. And a successful engagement strategy needs to include an earnest solicitation of feedback from ethicists and from the public to let them know that their concerns are being heard and to let them know that these conversations are happening about ethics and that they're happening in the open. Uh, third, the communication strategy should take advantage of the infrastructure that already exists to bring the public into contact with science. 
including uh, universities, museums, but um, even today we perhaps consider including artists as people who are out in the community and who understand the way that people best respond to science. Um, this could help make this you know, very ambitious, complicated international project uh, come across as more approachable and trustworthy. And uh, especially for involving international stakeholders, because again, this is an international project, reaching out to the existing resources is, is gonna be really crucial. So to briefly summarize, the success of GP Wright, in, in my opinion, and, and perhaps those of more on our committee, it's really gonna be linked to the way that the project interfaces with the media and with the public. Uh, that's gonna mean a genuine commitment to make the public feel as if his interests and values are reflected in the project, a humbling recognition of the mistakes that were made in the past, and a partnership with the scientific organizations and professional communicators that are already out in the community. Uh, so just to wrap up, I wanted to give you a taste of some of the questions we raised over lunch. Um, who are the stakeholders that we need to reach? This was a really difficult question. Um, what resources is this effort, this committee gonna have? Uh, what level of scientific complexity do we wanna present? Um, this was interesting, how and when do we wanna engage with various stakeholders? Should we start now? Should we start when, when perhaps results are, are more uh, immediately forthcoming? Uh, and ultimately, what's the story that we wanna convey? What's the, you know, what's the elevator pitch to the public? Um, all right, so I just want to acknowledge the rest of the members of this uh, communications and public outreach working group. Forgive me, because this list is already woefully out of date. Uh, we had uh, many more people um, who are very thoughtful and talented uh, join in over lunch, and I'm really excited to be working with them. Uh, I also want to thank the organizers of the GP Wright meeting, and in particular, Nancy, uh, for the invitation to speak. Uh, so thank you for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions, or also um, please, committee members, uh, jump in with any comments. Thank you very much.